right, guys, here we are. Quick shave tonight. I am tired. I want to get to sleep. Use number 249, I believe, with an acid. I'm going to put it in a razor. I found a very good user of this blade at, at this age. An open comb from Fatip. This is the Grande head or the Piccolo head. It's the Piccolo handle. Solid. A little thinner than the Grande handle. Samog C5 Torga Premium Boar Bristle. I like this guy a lot so far. I've had him soaking. Uh, today he soaked for a couple of hours. But he's had a nice soak. And then uh, TFS soap. Bergamato Neroli. It's an Italian soap maker. Chinese guy, many, you know, a generation or two ago, came over uh, from China, married an Italian woman. He brought his soap making expertise from China and then started making soaps in Italy. And so, Chong, Chong Feng Sing is the name of the company. And it's odd because it's a Chinese maker, but, uh, but a Chinese, I mean, an Italian maker, but a Chinese name. And, uh, but it's a good base. I just used it uh, recently in the, uh, and another flavor, Mandarin Tachino, something like that. Tachiana, can't remember. Um, so this is the Bergamot Neroli scent. And this is the Linnea Intenso. The Intense Line, that's what that means. All right, it, is, it says, um, like the Italian barber write-up says it's triple milled. It just looks like a crope, though. But maybe it's been milled and it's just, uh, uh, and so maybe the water's been removed, but the appearance is, is that of a crope. So, uh, so we'll just use it. Let us move the nasset blade into the razor. There's all the dots. 249. Now with the teep razors, they're inexpensive, they're brass components, they are plated, and so uh, those are lifetime quality components there. The only thing is, they uh, sometimes it takes a little bit to adjust the blade because it's not a, an easy, um, secure fit. Some of the time. So I just drop the blade on kind of naturally. I drop the base plate on naturally. I, I tighten it till it's tugging, uh, till it's uh, not going to move too much. And that was perfect. About half the time, maybe, it just seems to be perfect. So to me, it's not really too much of an issue. Even when you mess it up and have to adjust it, it doesn't take too long. So I like it. I like the uh, Fatips very much. Plus, the shave is incredible. All right, uh, pre, pre dump my face in some water here. There we go. Oh, I need to get a towel. Be right back. All right, let's load up the soap. Now, uh, yesterday when I used the same soap base, just the other scent, I loaded for a long time just to make sure that I had enough lather. So let's learn from that and load for about, let's try 25 seconds instead of the 45 from the other day, which I probably had three times as much lather. All right, so we're going to shake out most of the water. This is just my routine. You may discover a shortcut if you leave some water in the brush. Try it either way. All right, 25 second load. I'm going to wait until we kind of get to a round number. There we go. So the 05 mark on the next minute will be 25 seconds of loading. This is a stout little brush. It's got backbone, but very soft tips early on. It's going to get even softer as the tips keep splitting. Got frothy stuff overflowing. And there we 
we got 25 seconds now it says it's triple milled Henri and Victoria also have a soap that their new line of tallow they call it triple milled but it looks like a crope and so maybe that's kind of what we're dealing with here it, it, it's not a triple milled like a pressed like a Mitchell's wool fat or a pine type of soap or the DR Harris um, so uh, the water here is uh, pretty soft so it usually makes a little better lather a little easier lather with a little bit less soap needed than what I usually have at home now the mandarin orange and other various types of uh, orange scents were a part of that scent we used yesterday, the Mandarin Takino or whatever, Takiana. Uh, but today they, uh, and then also pineapple was used. Well, this soap also uses a little bit of pineapple. It also has some peach and some rose in there. And then the heart note Kind of once everything's kind of uh, faded away or just kind of supporting it uh, at the at a uh, low level is uh, a little bit of musk and so e from the dry tub i can definitely smell that uh, the rose coming in not as a feminine floral type of smell but as a uh, almost like as a sweetness that it's bringing in and I think it complements the, the orange very well also the uh, neroli is uh, in the orange family as uh, in terms of scents and it is the oil made from the uh, blossom of the orange plant of the orange tree or at least one kind of orange tree or some different kinds or something. Already we're looking, the lather's looking terrific. So two teaspoons in there now. I don't know exactly where the bergamot comes from. You know, maybe that's like a woody part of the orange. Uh, I can never remember. We've got so many names for the different components of a of an orange plant. You've got the woody part. You've got uh, like a zesty bitter, you know, kind of part. You've got the blossom, which is the neroli. I ended up using five teaspoons for 45 uh, seconds of loading. We've kind of halved the time of loading a little bit. And so let's put in just a half a teaspoon now. And so two and a half teaspoons is half the water we used. Let's just see where that puts us. This little smoke brush is, has a lot of room to work in this big lather bowl. This is my Roger Quintero, Quintero 3D printed lather bowl. I enjoy it a great deal. And it's the extra large size. I will put a link to the uh, files that you can download if you want to print this yourself. If you want to use an online service to print it, or if you can have a printer of your own. That's a great looking lather. Now we 
usually you see those hills and undulations and ridges usually I like to keep going with a, a soap at that point to, uh, to get it really wet you got a nice creaminess to this very good slickness I think it would protect pretty well I think I will add another half teaspoon here So this big bowl is the perfect size when I'm dealing with larger brushes like 26 millimeter with kind of average loft. This is kind of a, this is not a small diameter brush, but it's just got a short loft so that it's really scrubby because these bristles of this premium grade bore are just very soft bring the lather down and try to pull about half of it up definitely supporting its weight pretty well it's not really collapsing it's not nearly as wet as I had my lather the other day but why don't we just shave with it this this way anyway? It's fun to try the creamier runs, just and you just have to leave it on your face to make sure that for a few minutes in the beginning, make sure that slickness bonds to your face to be able to protect you. I may end up adding, and let me go ahead and add a little bit more. Okay, so we've got four teaspoons in it. Just go with that. Can't help it. So this is uh, it's still got quite a good bit of structure itself. It's not elastic or droopy like my lather was the other night. But let's just try it out this way and see what it feels like. Push down. I'm going to push down the brush into the lather to kind of shove some of the lather into the bristles here. All right. Get my face wet again. A little bit more than one day's worth of growth right now. By perhaps a few hours. So this might give me an idea about this soap base when you used a little more dry than the one I created for myself yesterday. I think it's a great scent. I think it's really cool of them to bring in the, the peach the rose works well with the neroli orange blossom type scent so we're just going to work the lather into my skin looks like it needs water of course but No, I don't think I'm going to add it this time. Let's just see what happens.
maybe a four or five out of ten the scent strength right now as I'm kind of working it there we go Mr. Fatip, 249 use is coming up. It established itself a few days ago as a really good option, really good razor to use when I have such an old blade, or at least this Nasset. Let's see if he can repeat his success. And this is, to me, this is a good example of how open combs are not always aggressive. A little rinse. Now I still feel quite a bit of stubble, but we are looking at beard reduction, not elimination in one pass so we get some more lather don't have to be quite as scrubby since we did a lot of scrub in that first pass so we'll lay down that layer of Lather there. And since that had so much hair, kind of still uh, able to be felt after that first pass, I'm going to pretty much keep with. Uh, with the grain pass for my second instead of switching to my cross grain right away. See if it knocks down that a little bit more stubble with a more gentle style of pass before we move on. And a little half rinse. Yeah, that worked really well. Okay, pass number three. This is a very enjoyable soap. Um, it takes, I think because of the peach and the pineapple, the floral of the rose and and maybe the neroli is is kind of uh, leaned toward a fruity type of scent. I think it's a really nice mix. It's not super masculine, but I'm not really seeing it as feminine, at least not in my first impression. So now I'll do cross grain here. So that's three passes. I'll do another one just for fun. Face feels really good right now. I don't feel like I have very much stubble at all, so I, I probably could 
stop right now and not do a fourth. Let's take a look. Yeah, I could if I needed to. If I had, if I didn't have a high scrutiny job, there's still a few uh, hairs that can be taken care of. Now, one of the things that tells me that I, uh, I didn't have to keep adding more water. That I, 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 I'm not too thick right now. Is that when I rinse, it rinses really cleanly. I could add more water, but. When I apply the water to my face after the shave, I'm not I'm, I'm not feeling like I'm I'm just starting to activate a lather. Sometimes when you have concentrate on your face, that's a, a feeling you'll get, but I'm not getting that and and it rinses fairly cleanly instead of kind of st starting to get more slimy and hey now you're going to start building a lather if you get that kind of feeling then that's usually a sign that you're really underwater in your lather at least you may you may want to underwater your lather that may be your preference but that's a sign that you could add more water to your lather if you without consequence, you know, if you wanted to. Now here's my little trouble area here, so I'll go this direction and then I'll swipe underneath my base plate. So we're gonna do a little touch up area, then I'll go the other direction. And hopefully that gets that area nicely. Yeah, pretty good comfort with this blade. This razor continues to be a good, good fit for it. But you must have the right geometry for the smoothed out edge. Because the edge is still very sharp, even though it's been used 249 times. It's still very, it's still very capable of cutting your skin. If used improperly. All right, we'll do a final rinse. I am very happy with the closeness of this shave. Face is still a little bit wet. This is a nice, easy rinsing soap. The slickness is not really a buttery kind of slickness like uh, you might get with uh, Sterling or some other, uh, some tallow soaps. Is this a tallow soap? Um, just because it's triple milled doesn't mean it's tallow. Prix de Provence is a, a vegan soap. It's triple milled. You can look at the tub here in a second. So this is the uh, Very Good Balm Soap Commander Integrity. Uh, they have two different kinds of the Integrity. Yeah, with the menthol and without menthol. I do not like menthol, and so that is, this uh, without menthol is my my choice. And this is pretty much the only one they have, at least like a year ago. Uh, the only option they have that wasn't equipped with menthol. All right, yeah, here's the uh, ingredients list. Oh man, I kind of wish the label was waterproof. I'm sure it'll dry okay. Doesn't look like the water is affecting the ink. This looks like it was printed on a uh, a uh, thermal laser, a thermal printer uh, with a ribbon, so it, it uh, shouldn't fade away too much. Let's see, stearic acid water. Um, yeah, this looks like a vegan vegan oil. I'm sorry, a vegan soap. Let's see if the camera focuses well enough for you to, to read the ingredients. Uh, so that's probably why we're not getting a, uh, a slickness akin to fine or tobacco uh, because it's a vegan soap. All right, well, I'm really happy with the shave. That was a that was an enjoyable lather. 
I like the scent, kind of a uh, mainly fruity with touches of a couple of floral pieces. The rose does give it a little bit of a, a feminine vibe, but I think the other pieces, the other parts of the note kind of even it out a little bit. Uh, it's definitely not masculine, but so oh, let's take a look at the the lather here. See, it doesn't droop down as before, uh, as I as it did yesterday, because yeah, yesterday I had a lot more water. Per uh, the water ratio was higher. Now, this is still a nice creamy soap. This feels great in my hand. The slickness is is there, and it doesn't feel too. Uh, the viscosity is increased a little bit, but it's not it's not too noticeably different. But the, we do have some some bubbles in the lather, but they're not causing it to be you know light in a uh, a watery kind of way. It's just a thin, uh, soapy kind of contact slickness. The general feel of the lather is one, of, at, the, at this hydration level at least, is one of a uh, pretty good luxury, but nothing like the uh, tobacco or fine or a tallow. Um, so, and now the price point of this guy is really good. I think 13 bucks. Triple milled soap for 13 bucks. It is vegan, and so I'm thinking that because it's triple milled, it's just going to really last you a long time, and that's a really good value here. And this is a very interesting, uh, well put together scent uh, that I think a lot of people are going to like. It's not. It's it's more on the sweet side. It's not like zesty. A lot of the uh, there definitely has some zesty orange type components that we we see in a lot of different soaps. Neither of these TFS soaps that I've used are uh, that, in that zesty family. Um, they're uh, sweet, on the sweeter side. First one in a mandarin kind of focus with a slight tweak with a pineapple. This one with an orange blossom kind of focus with the uh, with maybe a little bit of woodiness, uh, a little bit, not a lot. And, uh, and with, a, with a twist with the uh, tempered by the pineapple, a little bit as well, but the rose and the peach come in to bring in some fruitiness. So uh, I I think it's an interesting soap uh, scent. Bergamato Neroli. All right. Now this scent is not sticking around quite as much after the post-shave as the mandarin one was yesterday. Interesting. This one's a little smoother, a little sweeter perhaps. Um, the mandarin has a slight edge in terms of just a scent in general, uh, and so maybe that's why it stuck around with a little bit more power. All right. Well, time to clean up. Oh, hey, I don't want to forget to say thank you to Gabe. He's a YouTube viewer, and... Um, He's also out there on like Badger and Blade forums and things like that. And he contacted me. He is the benefactor of this soap and the, um, the razor I used yesterday. The base plate is the 68 Fatigue Open Comb. He has that very base plate on his own game changer. I'm sorry, I said Fatigue. Uh, that's because I used the Fatigue today. The Game Changer 68 Open Comb plate, base plate is a, a plate that he uses and really enjoys and he said he wanted a backup and but it's still instead of having the backup sent to himself and just have it sit and wait to be used in case the other one is lost or whatever he decided hey would you like to try it out because he knew that i had tried out the game changer at the uh, and i definitely like the game changer at the 84 or 85 whatever gap that is solid bar range and he said well here's this open comb it's, uh, you know, it's 68, but would you like to try it out? And I said, man, that's a great idea. I'd love to try that out because the 68 solid bar is a little too mild for me. 
and the open comb has good blade support, we found out, the, uh, even from the bottom. The, uh, it, uh, uh, the 68 solid bar was a little too mild for me, and uh, two-thirds of the blades I tried in it just didn't really give me a, a super close cut in my trouble spot, and so I, I did have to pass that base plate on to somebody else. But the open comb promises is often slightly more aggressive than the solid bar version in the same model. And so I thought, well, this could take the aggression up just enough to where I start enjoying it with more blades. Well, I did a test shave with it. It did not really tr do well with this blade in it, but this is not a usual typical blade. And so uh, I am trying to get to 300 uses with it by the end of June. And so I'm unable to stop and try the open comb game changer with a younger blade. I need to keep churning with my nasset. Speaking of which, let's show it to you to, uh, to verify that this is the blade we used. There's my three dots. There may, you may even see the N1 scratch that I put right above the A right there, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago. And over here on this side is where the X used to be and was there for so many years. I did put it like this with the dots facing up. And I've been doing that just as an exercise, just as a curiosity for the whole lifetime of this blade. And I think I've, I think what I've proven is, especially if you're just a person who uses a blade 20 or 30 times or five times, whatever that low amount might be, it doesn't matter if you flip or not. I didn't flip this blade and it all, it's continuing to work even at such a high number right now. So uh, don't be conscious is my advice. You don't need to be self-conscious about flipping your blade if you're not using it too many times. It's not going to give you an advantage. All right, well, I want to continue to kind of clean my stuff up. I've already put my post shave on. Oh yeah, let's talk about water usage. Um, what did we say? Yeah, so this is four teaspoons of water for that uh, 25 seconds of loading. And as you saw, we still had Three passes left over. So this little brush is picking up soap pretty quickly. I could definitely go and reduce the load time even more and save, uh, be economical, be more thrifty with my soap usage. All right, so today was a 25 second load and it needed four teaspoons of water. There's my ratio. So I just uh, rinsed the brush out really well scrub in the bowl there while the water was pouring in, dumping, letting it fill up, scrubbing more just to clean it out. Don't want, uh, we don't want to have any lather in the, in the root in the base inside there that can degrade the uh, fibers and cause them to fall out over time. You can see we've got some splay uh, to it. It's gradually opening up. We're getting more uh, tips, especially around the edges that have been uh, split. And I, I pull them apart a little bit just to open it up to promote the drying, nice drying. And I did, of course, drop it on the towel there to uh, get rid of the standing water. And so once you do that, once there's no droplets in there, then gravity doesn't come into play in terms of the drying. You can hang it up on a rack if you want, have it upside down, or you can put it on its base. doesn't make a difference as far as drying speed. Well, I ended up getting my Nasset paper wet, but I'll use this opportunity to have it as it's unfolded to show you all the dots. If you do a freeze frame, a pause, and count the dots, you should see 249. We've got a little space right there on this end tab for the 250th shave, so that'll be tomorrow. Let's see. Uh... See if we do it 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 
80, 90. So 90 in this main area, or the biggest square area. 90, 100, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 uh, is the total when we add the bottom tab down here. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So that's 210 when we add all three of these parts. So 220, 230, 240, 249. Yep, still tracking properly. And I got this a little wet, and so I'm going to have to hang it. I'm going to have to just leave it out. I'm not going to put the blade in it tonight. I want the blade to sit next to that moisture. So, for safety, I'm going to take the blade and put it back in the razor. If you are a fan of using vegan soaps and avoiding the tallow ones, then this might be a really good line for you to try out. The Linnea Intenso the TFS soaps. Because you're getting your vegan benefits. The slickness is wonderful. And it looks like I'm not using wearing away at the soap very much. And that's probably why you're looking at a triple milled soap. So you're not going to get quite the, the buttery slickness, uh, the luxurious uh, contact slickness of a tallow soap. But 13 bucks is a great deal on some good soap. And, uh, uh, but just the feel of the lather in general, uh, as I was manipulating and stuff, it's, it's a very nice lather. You do get a luxury feel from that. It's just that contact slickness that is a, a light soapy kind of, uh, kind of lubrication that is just a little bit different than the tallow, but I would have no problem shaving with this soap base for the rest of my life. It's very enjoyable. Uh, but in, if you're comparing it to some other triple milled soaps like uh, D.R. Harris, Tabac, uh, uh, Fine Accoutrements, um, uh, Haslinger, um, uh, some of those other guys, you're, um, you're, it's not going to be quite as, quite as good as some of those tallow, tallow guys. All right, very nice. Good shave today. I had great comfort with this. I did use four passes to get the job done, but that's fine, especially because I have a little bit more than a day's growth on me. The shave was comfortable. The blade cut closely, even in my trouble spot. Happy with that. And enjoyed the scent, enjoyed the soap performance, and enjoyed that little brush. He did really well with this, too. So uh, I am, I'm churning away at uses on him. Maybe he's nine by now. And I don't think he's killing lathers anymore at all. Uh, so he's going to be a, a, a good little brush for whatever soap I want to throw at him. Short little guy, but he's, he's the Samog you want, probably, if uh, you want a, uh, some, some backbone. And you don't want it to be floppy at all. You want uh, tips that are still focused at your face, but they do, it is easy to display. And it's going to get even softer over time. I think it's going to be fantastic. All right. Well, I think that's all. Uh, I'm just going to, I've just got a few things to clean up. And I hope there's been something good in here for you. Gabe, thanks so much for the, uh, the base plate that I will definitely use once I'm done it, putting this NASA through its uh, paces, getting it to 300. And thank you so much for the two TFS soaps that he's got uh, for me to uh, enjoy and try out. And, uh, and I'll be sending the, uh, uh, the soaps and the base plate back to him um, for uh, once all the kind of the eval period is done. Just a really nice little uh, group of items here. Thanks so much, Gabe. Hey, you guys. Have a good night. Take care.